What's up everybody, it's your boy Showtime Doctor, here with your Morgan in-depth guide. Yeah, laugh it up, baby. Alright, so, <clears throat> this is one of the characters that is on the banner right now. She is a very good character, very meta right now. And I am going to go over her for you, every nook and cranny and all that beautifulness right there. Even got her hair parted for you. Alright, so. The thing about Morgan is... <clears throat> everything that she does is based on her attack power. Everything that she does. Any self-buff, any debuff, and a lot of just her base abilities. So we will get into it right now. Honor 1. Inflicts damage equal to 100% of attack to one enemy. 35% chance to cause bleeding for 30% of attack for two, turn, two turns. So notice that, that bleeding for percentage attack right here. 30% of her attack. You can get that ticking very hard if you get her enough attack. So you skill this up, you know, you get a high, bit of a higher chance to put on the bleed. The percentage never goes up. Her base percentage goes up by the usual up to 160. So pretty good for a 1, very good for a 1 actually on her 2. Inflicts damage equal to 120% of attack to a target and 2 adjacent enemies. 35% chance to cause bleeding for 30% of attack for 2 turns once again. Removes 1 buff from the target. This is a very good ability, it's basically a cone effect. Uh, she spins, has a good chance to put bleed, and <clears throat> uh, she removes, it's a little debuff, so something like an able shield, etc. Uh, you go in there, you spin on it, it goes away, even though you're not doing any damage at that point. But Otherwise, uh, once you level this up, you know, the chance to cause bleeding goes up again, all the way up to 60. And then you get a 192. This is actually a very good ability for her. And then her 3, her bread and butter right here, her ultimate, 300% attack, ignores defense, 60% chance to make the target unable to be revived for 2 turns. Very strong ultimate right now in the meta. Decreases cooldown by skill 3 by 2 turns if the attack fails to kill the target. So you see it's a 7 turn cooldown, it'll go to 5. You skill it up all the way, that it turns to 3 turns. So it'll go to 4. Unable to be revived also goes to 3 turns. And this goes to 85% chance to make the target unable to be revived. So I'm actually going to be pulling on the Morgan banner pretty heavy because I'm trying. I got her ult at level 3 right now. Want to get it to six. So hits really hard, ignores defense, chance to, uh, you know, pretty high chance, unable to be revived, and decrease, decrease its own cooldown if it doesn't kill anybody. So pretty strong, very strong. For leadership, very good. Uh, if you don't have a full fire team and you can't run that Electro bonus for 60%, you can get 40%. She goes very well in PvP right now, paired with Cynthia, because Cynthia on her one ignores defense. So get Cynthia and Morgan hitting 40% harder, why not? And then right here, her passive Demon Sword Bloody Pedal inflicts damage equal to 50% of attack to a bleeding target at the start of a turn. So anyone that's bleeding whenever she's taking her turn, you know, you can manipulate her turn when you resurrect her with Rue, it'll be her turn instantly. Or Karen, if you have Karen on your team, just haste her, get her turn to come back pretty quick, and that'll tick for additional damage and Morgan can go again, get her cooldowns back faster. Uh, and then increase the caster's attack by 10% for two turns when attacking a bleeding target. Stacks up to five times, so you can get that to 50%. So what I said earlier to you guys about percentage attack, very important. All of her stuff, based on her attack, just straight up. So, increase caster's attack by 10%. Oh, I already went over that. Stacks up to five times, so you can keep that up. If you get a Morgan with five stacks, she is hitting so hard. It is so great. I was utilizing that on the Cowley dungeon. It's just a pain to keep her alive in there. But when she did get the five stacks, though, she was wrecking. Uh, applies a status Demon Sword Bloody Pedal to the caster upon killing an enemy to inflict 30% additional damage for two turns. So anytime you kill somebody, uh, she gets a self buff for two turns, just going to inflict 30% additional damage. Stacks with everything else she already gets up here and on her abilities. So really good. Attack and bleeding targets. Etc. If you're running her with another bleeding hero, I can't think of any offhand, but you know, there's some out there. Gets pretty strong with her. Uh, and then Morgan's Madness on her 60 passive. 50% chance to apply Demon Sword Bloody Pedal to the caster for two turns when attacking. 
That is this right here, the self buff for 30%. So rather than killing somebody, you just got a chance at the beginning of her turn, or excuse me, when attacking, to uh, get that buff. You know, 30% more attack damage, so that's pretty gnarly. Revives with 50% HP and becomes a Berserker for three turns upon death, once per battle. While Berserking, you are guaranteed counterattack and multi strikes and decreased damage taken by 25%. Uh, you can cheese this a little bit. Uh, the dev said it's okay. If you get uh, abnormal status immunity on her before she dies, so a Ru 2 or a Able 3, there's some other casters that can do it. Uh, you can control her while she's Berserk, so you can target that primary attack, and she's going to get a double attack, and she's going to counter, and you can control her abilities. So, if you happen to have a lot of the self-stacking buff stuff up, you got Bloody Petals up, and then you got Berserker, so you're taking 25% less damage. You can make this lady into a little force, man. She is an army of one right here. This is one of the best characters in the game right now. It's between her and Cynthia for single target DPS on uh, fire DPS, but... They both work in very different ways, so it's kind of weird to compare them. But at the same time, just run them both. Why not? If you got them both, run them both. Uh, now, uh, potential combos to run her with, like I just said, Cynthia. Uh, Electra, if you have that five fire. Rue, another fire. Rue does deceptively decent damage, actually, once she gets that uh, defense down debuff up. And getting defense down for these people, obviously going to be gold. Uh, running Rue with Cynthia, not recommended in most cases. Sometimes it is. Because Cynthia needs to be silenced to be good. But as far as Morgan goes, always great to use Rez. Because when you Rez with Rue, not only is it Morgan's turn next, but uh, Rue also puts a percentage attack buff up. You know, once again, stacks with all her other stuff. Now, granted, you just resurrect her, so she's probably not going to have all this stuff up. But, you know, getting her to hit hard, never a bad thing. And then other, other potential uh, characters you could run her with. Like I said, Karen, even though most people don't think about it. Uh, Karen, she can haste Morrigan. She can keep Morgan cleansed of debuffs. And she can also... Uh, I want to say she puts up that abnormal status immunity, but I'm not sure about that. But she cleanses debuffs either way, so she's really good. And she can help keep Morgan up with her passive heal. Um, you know, otherwise just anyone that can buff her Leafa. Leafa will give her that extra crit damage, that extra attack damage, and then uh, that extra mitigation on her two. So that's pretty strong. And, you know, you can always run the triple Berserker team, which is kind of funny. So it's her, her Leafa, and Xena. And Xena is an admin hero. Works kind of similar to Morgan. You can lose control of him when he berserks, but that's kind of a fun team to run. Run him with Rue and then whoever else you want to run him with. It's pretty funny. So... Now we're going to go into her talent tree. I will show you my Morgan and what I do, what I do with her. Uh, before we get to that. So, as you see, like I said, I'm scaling up her three. Hopefully I'll get three more copies on this banner. And if I can get this to 6, we will be rocking in that stupid guild battle garbage. But for now, you see her attack is damn near 8,000, which is right around where you want to be with most of your DPS. Uh, get to 8,000 if you can. Uh, HP, you know, it's decent. 14,000 would be a little better. Defense, I actually need to raise her defense. I've been thinking about it. I'll show you what I've been doing with her. Um, so, you know, base attack speed, because... PvP, she's already pretty fast. 589 base speed is actually super, super good. I got her crit chance up. As you know, a crit in Morgan's always a good thing. Crit damage, just a little bit. I could get that higher, but I'm not critting that much. So accuracy, that comes with the uh, the purple stars. Counter, uh, I, I remember I got a rune with counter on it. And a uh, counter subjective on her because when she's berserking, she's auto-countering. But, you know, she's only berserking three turns, and depending on what you're doing, that might not be enough. So having her counter is not a bad thing, especially if she can get a, an attack on something that is bleeding for that self-buff. 
or maybe she will cause a bleed with it as well. A uh, little bit of evasion on her. I think that was just coincidental. The runes I'm running on her. I'm probably going to get rid of the crit strike chance increase for defense because she is too squishy, unfortunately. Now, crit strike, I'm running that because obviously crit strike more damage. But she needs a fair amount of HP increase because you don't want her to get one shot too often. Hard counters for her are Ezna and Tayo right now. But generally, she won't get one shot. And even when she does, you know, she'll come back as a Berserker most of the time, as long as Revive isn't sealed. So you see, I actually got a lot of HP increase on her. I could get more attack if I wanted to. Uh, there's counterattack. Triple attack, which is super good on her, actually. I need to get more of those. And then these are the crit runes. Uh, these were the best I had. Slot 5 is notorious for get hard to get... Uh, three really good stats on it. And in this case, it actually works out pretty good for her, so... Evade's not bad for her. And then, you know, another triple attack. Um, probably, like I said, switch this around to defense at some point. Just because that 10% extra defense. We haven't figured out the defense formula, but, you know, it's, it's just nice of, for her to... Because if, if your DPS is dead, you know, it doesn't matter how much damage they do if they're dead, in most cases. But that's what I got going on right now with that. So, on her hero talents... There's another thing I did that I might want to take back. So, Weapon Mastery, that should be a slam dunk. Uh, if you really want her to kill Wind Heroes, you can go Elemental Damage. Which, you know, you can already get 20% additional attack, so 30% additional damage you know that's up to you this this is horrible don't do this uh you use their skill three if even if you level it up all the way once every four turns most of the time so <laughs> probably don't want that on her two i got an 80 percent chance to cause bleed for two turns to be perfectly honest i should probably do this uh, that was something I did early before I realized that she basically causes bleed all the time. And she's using her two on... You know, it's a four-turn cooldown, so... Honestly, that's one I'll change at some point here, probably to this. Increase damage deal to bosses. Uh, you know, if you use her, her in Arena more, you're heavy into PvP. There's always that. So I got the defense bonus here. Which is pretty gnarly. You can do the elemental bonus if you're getting just like destroyed by water. Burn. Eh, I don't recommend burn. Uh, if you got a burn heavy team or one of those things where dots, like people deal more damage when something is has a dot ticking. She already puts bleed up. So it's up to you. Grudge. This is another one I probably need to change. I love that percentage attack. But she gets hit really hard by bosses. So I'm going to change at least two out of the three, like counting the rune set I was telling you about with the crit. I'll probably give her defense bonus. I might keep this, but I'm definitely changing this. And this will go to increase damage dealt. So that's my recommendation for that, knowing now what I don't, didn't know then. Uh, crit strike chance. If you manage to get her crit strike chance high, you can always go for the crit strike damage. There's also this chance penetration when attacked. Morgan usually gets attacked uh, in PvP early on. So there's a decent chance for that if you're fighting something annoying like a clod or whatever. You know, there's uh, penetration damages here for you. But I recommend the crit strike chance if you're just starting out with her until you get uh, her rune properly, etc. And as far as purple stars go, uh, I'll just condense it because I think I've been taking long on purple stars. I haven't actually gotten her six star. I do recommend getting it eventually, but it's so much farm. So uh, your number one is going to increase her accuracy or excuse me, her speed and her attack. That is excellent. Get that purple star immediately. Two defense. You know, you could delay that a bit. Accuracy is good. Defense is good. Three for the max HP and damage to defensive types. 
you know, all this stuff is really good. More damage on her one, more defense, more HP, more damage to support types. All of her purple stars are good, so. Recommend getting the purple stars ASAP. Now we are going to take her out. I am going to take her to the Sid dungeon. Win or lose, uh, you'll get a showcase of what she's about. And hopefully I'll get another Sid. I need four more Sids to skill up as one. Then I will never touch that dungeon again. Do y'all feel the same way? So now I need to think about what team I want to run in here. Normally I actually run Tayo in here. Which I know I'm going to trigger people with that. Yeah, I already run Tayo in a wind dungeon. Yeah, whatever. But in this case, I wonder if Eamon would be any good in here. I'm thinking about it. Because normally I run double DPS, triple support. Okay, I, I think I'll kick Eamon out just for this time. Well... Because I was scared about Eamon, but I, then I, I found out that his self-buff can't be dispelled. But then if I do that, I still gotta run. Okay, yeah, let me kick him out. I'll put Tayo in, slot three. You go to slot four, and then... I will run a friend's Rue in slot five. We will go to town, and you will see how Morgan works. See if I can get Kathy. Yep, there we go. Alright, we should be good now. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> wow, what a professional. Alright. Let me set that up again. I wish it would just kick you back to the dungeon screen, but... Oh well. By the way, I think Kathy L makes videos. I've never actually watched one, but that's out there for you if you want a video. <clears throat> oh, by the way, guys, I just wanted to tell you, thank you so much for the comments. I get a lot of comments that are like, you are the most new player friendly uh, YouTuber. You are the most you know, non- uh, you know, super in-game YouTuber. So I appreciate those comments, guys. I, I try to give you the experience of how I see the game, and that slows me down. I cannot release content as fast as a lot of those guys because I just straight up don't have the heroes in a lot of the heroes' cases. But anyway, let's get to this. So, on our one, you see all those bleeds that procked. You see also how squishy she is. And it doesn't help. She has the defense down. But she got the talent increase, that one that I showed you earlier. And she has abnormal status immunity, which I don't know how she got that, actually. But that's good, though. That is a good thing. And that's her self-revive on her buff there. She didn't get any of her procs on the, like, demon sword type thing. And that's mostly because... Uh, you know, she didn't kill anything. So that right there, that shield, that prog, that Sid shield, whenever someone gets below, I think it's 30%, it's something like that. Uh, Sid procs a shield that does damage absorb for a turn, so. And what I'm doing here, how I'm setting up these guys, you see they're all just like wrecking uh, your girl over there more. Than I'm setting up these guys for the kill, so what we're doing mostly is getting one really weak. This one in the middle has defense down debuff, so I'm actually going to probably Morgan ult him. And here it comes. Yeah, well, she didn't get the kill, but you see all the buffs that are on her. You got that Demon Sword Bloody Petal, that's the thing that makes her do 30% additional damage. So that's a chance, once you get her to 60, that's a chance just when she attacks. She also gets it when she kills something. And you know, I'm just gonna tile his old stuff. 85% click. 
And normally when you're doing this dungeon, guys, just as a one-off, I recommend killing one spider ASAP, but if my guys are buff enough to deal with it, you know, it's not the end of the world. Alright, so we are gonna fight what I consider to be the hardest mob in this dungeon, this stupid snake in the middle. I'm saving all my like really big cooldowns for that snake, because every time you hit him, the dude is hitting super hard. Or you get the stacking attack buff. He absorbs dark damage, by the way, for you guys that are coming in the Sid dungeon. So don't bring your dark hero. Unless it's a support or something. Don't get the more the more just to showcase as the. We're doing more things here. Yeah, so Morgan doesn't have her cooldowns yet. I should have actually just, uh, next turn I'll use Sid's cooldown reduction. Big evade from Morgan there. We're trying to kill this spider on the end. If that would kill Sid, because I I can't tell if he's at half health or not. And what I'll skip. Okay, so what I'll do here, I'm gonna do her spin attack. Her spin attack once again. Good chance to uh, bleed, and it removes a buff. So if you ever have anything you need to dispel, it works in a cone effect. It's not gonna work well here, but you'll see it later on. The shadow Sid, but even on a solo target, it does pretty good deeps. Here comes Morgan too. Oh, I love how everyone just dies. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stun this spider. Get that multi-strike extra damage on Tyo. Is that Rue? Why is Rue dead? You see how ridiculous this dungeon can be, so... That thing that they're putting up is the equivalent of a uh, mental seal, so basically if you do anything besides defend while it's up, you take 50% of your life as damage. So it can be pretty brutal. Boy, it's big snake time. So I'm gonna get abnormal status immunity up. Morgan just ulted right there. You see how hard that crit? That was actually a very timely ult by her because the snake needs to die ASAP. He hits so hard right now. Especially if he gets that poison spit off. Oh, thank god he's done. Okay. Okay, Shadow Sid. <clears throat> this is where Morgan's 2 is gonna shine. But she's gonna die a lot. You'll see it when phase two happens here. Morgan's still zerking, so I can't control her. There, she just came out of it. It's a three turn zerk. I forgot she had damage immunity, I could have gone. Anyway. So she just got some Demon Sword Bloody Petal there, so it gives her another 30% attack. Super gnarly.
Uh, we're just trying to DPS this guy fairly consistently without... Dying. Every time he hits you with that bird, by the way, you notice, my, my buff duration's going down. So, that's actually one of the unfortunate parts of this, this dungeon, because later on he gets a bunch of clones that do the exact same thing. And it sucks. <laughs> Also, you can't stack debuffs on this guy, so there's gonna be no bleeds or taunts or anything. Later. By the way, guys, I've been looking for ways to counteract poison and brand and that type of effect. Because even Rue doesn't do it. I mean, I mean, she can do it with her two. Sid does it with his one, but your best bet for dots is actually going to be Abel, believe it or not, because Abel has that shield that he passively puts up uh, once you get a 60. It makes you immune to dot damage. Uh, the dot debuff might still be able to go up, but the dot damage will not tick, and you can have it up for two turns on other characters. So that is a potential way to deal with dots, uh, have an Abel. I'm actually gonna at some point work my Abel up a little bit higher than he is, because he's 60 and he's like one purple star right now, I believe. So that's one of the things I'm looking to do. <clears throat> Susan. My man's got six stacks over there. This is gonna be so good. Tayo with eight stacks. Yes, hit him, hit him hard. Yeah. All right, the deal with this garbage. And for those that want an explanation of this dungeon, like I said, there's two other videos I've done, so that's why I'm not over explaining the dungeon too much. By the way, guys, if you're new to this game, this guy in the middle, Tayo, you can only get him from his Advent Dungeon. I believe it's coming next week. It might be two weeks. Um, if you get Jacqueline off the banner, work up a Jacqueline, or if you happen to have a Ruby, work them up, because they are going to do really good in that dungeon. So You want this guy. He's actually probably top-tier water deeps right now. That's Morgan's all once again. We also got Demon Sword Bloody Petal for the additional 30% damage. You see how ridiculous this can get, right? So. But luckily, Tyler's on it. Cruz on it, rather. Stun the clown. Whoop the main guy. This guy over here with the buffs, that's the guy that we're targeting overall. But this boss fight gets pretty intense pretty quick. Another thing in this dungeon that I found out, um, as long as you target regular Sid, you will always hit the main Sid. So if you want to hit everybody, just go ahead and target them. And the only person you can't hit is whoever's on the opposite side. In that case. So here's the spin that I was talking about earlier. So what this is going to do, this has a chance to remove, or it's probably going to remove if he has an attack buff up, which he doesn't unfortunately. But if there was a buff, it would uh, remove it. So what I'm going to do, we'll spin. Get rid of the clones, because controlling the clones in this fight is really important. And you know, she's probably going to die, but we'll get her right back up in a bit. Get that abnormal status immunity. Of Tyodoma clone. And you just keep plugging away, baby. Plugging away. Yeah, 
two stacks. Okay, I'm gonna do this because actually I'm not sure if Morgan will have her ult. If she doesn't though, either way she'll hit hard. Uh, this is a buff. A tech buff for the team. Ah, she's one turn away. Okay. Well then, I should try to kill the clone. So close. Actually, I can still get him. Before he goes. Bam! When Tayo counters, he hits 50% harder. I wonder if I should make an amended guide for this dungeon. Like, my guide before wasn't bad, but there's a couple of other mechanics I understand better now. Maybe I will. Throw we'll her up, and she has the talent proc from... I believe it's 30% additional attack, so... You know, if she'd have crit there, that'd have been it. So yeah, after you do the Kali dungeon, the Sid dungeon's like nothing. <laughs> it's pretty funny. No offense to you new players, you know what I mean. It's just I remember this dungeon used to be a nightmare. And it still will be for a lot of people until you get your characters geared up and stuff. But, man, this is like a cakewalk compared to Callie's dungeon. Kali, depending on how Kali was feeling, if she was critting like every turn, it didn't matter what she did. But oh well. Get that abnormal status up so we can't get stupid. There we go. I hope I hope that showcased her a little bit for you guys. Morgan is super, super amazing, super good character. And I got a troll. Whatever the hell her name is. Oh well, just four more SIDs and I'll be done with this place. So anyways, guys, I hope uh, that was cool for your Morgan Showcase. Again, I am ShowtimeDR on Twitch. You can find me there. You got my YouTube. Check the notes. There's a link to my Discord. Come hang out. Uh, we're all anime heads in there. You know, so come on in, talk. Share your experiences, ask some questions, maybe give some advice. Whatever you, wherever you feel like. And that is it for your Morgan in-depth character analysis. Good luck today, guys, uh, with the weekly reset for everything. I hope your farming goes well and that RNG may it ever be in your favor. Take care. Bye-bye, guys.